The main purpose of making 3-nitrothalic acid is for the synthesis of luminol. Luminol is a pretty cool molecule that exhibits chemiluminescence, and I'll be making it in a future video. The synthesis of 3-nitrothalic acid does have its educational merits, though, because we are going to be nitrating an aromatic ring. The nitration of aromatics is a pretty important chemistry, most notably in the production of explosives. Many explosives are based on the nitration of aromatic rings, the most notable one being TNT or picric acid. Anyway, with no more stalling, we can go over what we need to do this reaction. For this reaction, I used 30 grams of phthalic anhydride and 28.4 milliliters of both concentrated sulfuric acid and concentrated nitric acid. The nitric acid was made by myself at home, the sulfuric acid was distilled from drain cleaner, and the phthalic anhydride was actually purchased. However, it is possible to get the phthalic anhydride at home, and I showed this in a previous video where we get it from gloves. I will post a video eventually on the distillation of the sulfuric acid and also the synthesis of the nitric acid. I did try this experiment using a nitrate salt instead of nitric acid, but I didn't get any product and the results were pretty bad. Other people seem to have good experiences with it though, but this is the reason why I went with nitric acid. Anyway, now we know what we need to do it, so let's get started. To an Erlenmeyer flask, I add in 30 grams of phthalic anhydride. I start stirring using a magnetic stir bar and I add in 28.4 milliliters of concentrated nitric acid. Once it's all added, I let it stir for a bit and then I slowly add in 28.4 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. The addition of the sulfuric acid is pretty exothermic so it should be added as slowly as possible. After it's all been added, the solution at this point should be pretty hot. We use this mixed acid system because the sulfuric acid reacts with the nitric acid to form the nitronium ion. Nitric acid alone won't work really to add an NO2 group and we really need the sulfuric acid to prepare it. It's stirred for a little while at room temperature and it becomes this opaque white color. I then set up an inverted funnel trap using some tape to neutralize any nitrogen dioxide fumes that come off. You'll see in a bit that once we start heating it, it will produce a lot of nitrogen dioxide. I fill a glass pot with some water and I start heating it up. The goal here is to heat the reaction at about 100 degrees Celsius for 2 hours. Because it's at 100 C, I had to replenish the water every so often because it boiled away. As the reaction proceeds, it produces more and more nitrogen dioxide until it gets quite red. Also, the solution will go from being opaque to transparent. As we continue heating it though, it will slowly become opaque again. A lot of the product that's formed isn't soluble, so it crashes out of the solution. The reaction that we're performing is a nitration, and our product is ideally 3-nitrothalic acid. Unfortunately, this nitration reaction isn't super specific, and it will also produce 4-nitrothalic acid. The ring that we're putting the nitro group onto is an aromatic ring, and the reaction that we're carrying out is known as an electrophilic aromatic substitution. I won't really go over the details of the reaction, but one thing to notice is the part that I highlighted in blue of the phthalic anhydride. The group that I highlighted in blue is known as an anhydride. This anhydride is sensitive to water, so on top of the aromatic being nitrated, the anhydride is also hydrolyzed. When the anhydride is hydrolyzed, it forms the carboxylic acids that I've highlighted in blue in the products. Anyway, once the two hours are up, we take it out of the water bath and we let it cool down. Most of the NO2 is gone at this point and it's safe to remove the trap. The reaction mixture was then poured into about 75 milliliters of distilled water. It's important to be careful because this addition is exothermic, so it's going to heat up a little bit. Once it's all added, I swirl it around to thoroughly mix it with the water. Also, our flask is still covered with this white product, so I add a little bit of distilled water to clean it. I wash the flask a few times using a minimal amount of water each time. I kept mixing it around occasionally to make sure that everything was thoroughly mixed. I then put some saran wrap over the top of the beaker and I placed it in the freezer. After it had chilled, you can see that there's a lot of solid at the bottom. This solid should consist mostly of 3-nitrothalic acid, so we filter it off. 
The mixture is stirred up and then it's poured into the filter. If you recall earlier, I said that we would be making both 4 nitrothalic acid as well as 3 nitrothalic acid. What's lucky for us though is that the 4 nitrothalic acid is much more soluble in water and the 3 nitrothalic acid is much less. So most of the solids should be our 3 nitrothalic acid and most of the 4 nitrothalic acid should be dissolved in the liquid. The liquid is filtered through and the beaker that we transferred everything in from before is washed with a little bit of water which is also added to the filter. It's washed further a few times with some cold water just to get rid of any acid or 4 nitrothalic acid that might remain. Afterwards, we keep pulling a vacuum on it to get it as dry as possible. Even after pulling vacuum on it for a bit, it was still pasty, but that's okay. I transferred everything to a small beaker, and what we're going to do next is we're going to recrystallize the 3 nitrothalic acid from water. This way we can really clean it up and make sure there's no 4 nitrothalic acid present, and it will also get rid of any residual acid. To do the recrystallization, we keep everything on a hot plate, and we first start by adding a little bit of boiling water. We mix it around and we keep adding boiling hot water slowly until the solution completely clears up. You can see that eventually, upon addition, it totally cleared up and at this point we're done and we can take it off heat. The goal here is to let it cool down slowly in the hopes that it will form nice crystals. If it cools down too quickly, the product can crash out of solution and it can trap impurities with it and it won't form very nice crystals. I came back after it cooled to room temperature and unfortunately it didn't seem like there was any crystals. One way to get crystals if they don't form is to scrape the bottom of the beaker to break off little pieces of glass. These little broken pieces of glass can serve as starting sites for crystals to form and you can see here that some actually do start to form. I should have stopped earlier but when I was stirring it I didn't see that crystals were forming but it's pretty clear that the solution is getting cloudier and cloudier. We leave it for a while, and when we come back, there's a bunch of precipitate at the bottom. So just like before, we mix it up and pour it back into the filter and pull off the water. Once all the water is gone, we wash the beaker with a little bit more of cold water, and we pull that through as well. I do one or two more ice cold water washings just to make sure that it's clean as possible, and then I dry it under vacuum. After it's pretty dry, I scrape it off of the filter and we're left with some nice relatively dry powder. This product should be nearly pure 3 nitrothalic acid. When I pour it onto a crystallizing dish, it seems like very nice white pure powder. There's a little bit of a yellow color and this is due to the presence of moisture. It's pretty common for nitrated organic compounds to form a yellow solution when dissolved in water. I left it out for a day to really dry under air and we're left with a nice crisp powder. This powder is then transferred to a small container and we're ready to continue on our luminol synthesis. My final yield was 12.81 grams which is a yield of about 30%. This yield is pretty abysmally low but it's pretty much expected for this reaction. The major issue in this reaction is that the formation of 3-nitrothalic acid isn't very specific and we're forming quite a bit of 4-nitrothalic acid. Because of this lack of specificity, the yield takes a pretty big hit. Anyway, that's all for now on the 3-nitrothalic acid. There's nothing really cool to do with it besides making luminol. I've actually already made luminol using it and I just have to get around to editing it and it will be up pretty soon, I think. Anyway, as usual, that's all I have to say for now, and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Again, here's a list of the videos that I'm currently editing and future videos I plan to film. In the videos being edited category, you can vote for the one that you want me to publish next, and in the future video category, you can vote for the one that you want me to film next. Also, if you're feeling generous, please donate to my Patreon account, because with a bigger budget per video, I can do more things. Also, just as some added information to this generic outro, I've actually gone ahead and made a YouTube fan page. When I get my act together, I should be able to set up polls there where people can vote on the next video.